wild women in the deep beach Texas woods. They read the Patrick and party with the authors and have more fun than you think they in the good. Wild, wicked, and free. They're the Pope with queens. Pop one, Wild, wicked, Hi, everybody. Welcome to Beauty in the Book. What a treat we've got today. Melanie Benjamin's here to share with us the story of an extraordinary woman who used her limited height to limitless advantages. Hard to imagine that a woman just 32 inches tall could conquer the world, but she did. Let's find out how. Best-selling author Melanie Benjamin's got another gem for us to read, the autobiography of Mrs. Tom Thumb. Let's give her a warm Texas welcome. Melanie, so glad to have you here today. Well, thank you for having me, Kathy. I'm so excited. Tell us the story or give us a little intro on who this woman was. Well, Lavinia Warren Stratton mm -hmm. was a, a little woman who was 32 inches tall. She suffered, well, she didn't suffer. She had a form of proportional dwarfism. That meant she was what they called a perfect little woman in miniature. And she was born in 1840, now that I'm going to blank on this, 1841, I believe it was. And um, she was born to a New England family, um, and she was born during a time when someone of her size was probably the only kind of life they were going to experience was to be hidden away and taken care of by the family. But in fact, she was actually a school teacher by the time she was 16. It's amazing. And amazing. She had an incredible drive and an incredible thirst to see life, to experience things, and to be known. She didn't want to be forgotten. And she came along at a time in the 1850s America when a man named P.T. Barnum mm -hmm. was kind of changing what we think of as American entertainment today. It was a time when America was kind of coming out of their individual villages and having a collective consciousness about things that we now call popular culture. And um, Barnum found a little man named Charles Stratton, who was 36 inches tall, and exhibited him as General Tom Thumb. And Vinnie knew about this, and she, she wanted her, her measure of fame too. And so she kind of put herself out there and exhibited herself and came to the attention of Barnum. And in 1863, she and Charles Stratton married. That so, was quite a story too. Yeah, and so she, it was kind of like the Charles and Diana of Ameri of that time. Their wedding knocked the Civil War right off the front pages. They were the most famous couple in America and soon the world. It's the same time period of the Margaret Mitchell book, Gone with the Wind. Yeah. And so for anybody that was a fan of that story, this is kind of a, an interesting side story of where it, it spans the same time span. And then later on, we bring in President Lincoln and what happened right with him and his wife. President Lincoln and Mrs. Lincoln hosted a wedding reception for her that and, was fascinating. and Tom Thumb in the White House. She met so many notable people over time and she met General Grant. She was asked to do private audiences quite often where she would meet notable people. So they just wanted to meet her, they wanted to get her photograph, they wanted to shake her hand. Again, no one had seen right. anyone like that her before. Tiny. Until reading your book, you don't really understand what it's like to be that tiny. She traveled the nation during a time when travel was primitive and hard for anyone of a normal size anyway. I mean, long, long train trips where you had to tra change trains, you know, every town because it was a different railroad and getting up and down and off trains and you're sitting on these hard benches and there were no, you know, just a bucket for a public restroom and she was 32 inches tall. I mean, she had to be lifted up and lifted down. She traveled with a set of stairs that her father had made her of, a collapsible folding set of wooden stairs that enabled her to do the simplest things like just wash her hands or look in a mirror. What I try to capture in the book are the everyday, just the difficulties of, of holding a pen that's just not built to size for you, you know, that, that her hand would ache from holding a pen. Or in the 1860s, a lady couldn't even dine out without wearing gloves. And she couldn't just go and have and buy them. She had to have everything custom made for her. One thing about your book is this is based upon a real story, but it is fiction. It's a narrative fiction, faction, but tell us about your research. This is all well known and documented. There are a lot of newspaper articles. She was one of the most photographed women, but I first encountered her on the pages, in the pages of E.L. Doctorow's book, Ragtime. Really? She has a very small scene with oh. Harry Houdini in that book. Another and famous person. He, and that's another example of historical fiction where he takes right. real people and real events and he constructs 
uh, brilliantly just this amazing fictional story behind it. And that's kind of what I try to do. So that was very, very easy to find. What was not easy to know or find were her actual feelings. And I can only imagine, which is but what I like to do, is imagine what, the, what really went on. And that's where I get to um, really take over and shape this into fiction. Well, she was uh, quite a little person, Mrs. Tom Thumb, and kind of like the little person, Matt Roloff's A Little People, Big World. How about little people, big hair? Let's give you a big hairstyle. What do you think? Okay, I I'm not 32 inches tall, but I'm not a whole lot bigger than that, so I could use some height on my on my top of my head, so let's go do well, it. Well, I think Vinny would probably, if she was here today, she'd want some big hair too. I think so. One thing I found about getting big hair is all women want to have some height mm -hmm. and they love having big hair. Are okay. you the same way? Well, you know, actually, I, was, I have a sad childhood experience to relate. Oh um, no. I have curly hair and my mother never could figure out what to do with it. So instead, she would just take me to the barber shop and have like a buzz cut almost. It was like like just sad, shorn little hair. It was sad. It was always looked like somebody cut your hair with a lawnmower. Almost, and I always longed to have long hair. Actually, um, I always wanted to be like Amy in Little Women with the long blonde curls. Oh, yeah. I liked her. I mean, too. I like Joe, but I wanted Amy's hair. I'm going to be adding this hair piece, which I think is going to be a really great blend. It's yeah. actually an attachable hair piece, but we're going to pin it up to make your big hair. Is there a particular dish that you like to do or well, that I, would tie into the book? I do have a little recipe I use for um, like Christmas time. It's, it's really, really good for Christmas time. and. And uh, we, we can name it Vinny's Minis. Vinny's Minis, I love Minis, it. After Mrs. Tom Thumb. So what you do is you take a mini pretzel mm -hmm. and you stick a, a Rolo candy on top of it and a pecan on top of that and fill up a baking sheet with them and stick them under the oven until the caramels melt. It's a perfect little mini salty, sweet, caramely, chocolatey goodness. It's really good. I love this yeah. idea. doing in the middle of Jefferson, Texas, Kathy. Well, this is Jay Gould's private car and it's here on permanent display. This is so perfect. Well, I wanted it to tie into the story of Vinny and how yeah. she always rode the train. She did. She. This is a little luxurious for what she started out in, but um, you know, when she started out in the 1850s, train travel was really very primitive. And so she was traveling on primitive benches. Some of them probably didn't even have backs to them. And so if you can imagine Vinny, she had to totally rely on people lifting her up, and strangers mainly lifting her up, lifting her down, dealing with her trunks and her baggage. But you know, I think there was something in her that just, she loved to travel. You oh, want to see the inside? I would love to. Oh my. Look. Now, Vinny did, they did have a private railroad car when did they toured they? one season with Barnum's um, The Greatest Show on Earth, but I don't think it was as opulent as this one was. Oh, wow. I wouldn't mind traveling like this. Melanie, I have another big surprise. Oh, what? Well, you told me that you were named after Melanie from Gone with the Wind. I was. I'm glad I wasn't named Pity Pat. I was named <laughs> Melanie, so. Well, we have a Gone with the Wind Museum here in Jefferson. Oh, you do? And it's the second largest collection, so let's go check oh, it out. Wait, can we go? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Can you believe everything that she has collected? This, oh, this is, is fabulous. Beautiful. I mean, Gone with the Wind was really, it's such an inspiration, I think, for almost every historical novelist. We're all trying to kind of write the next Gone with the Wind. The timeline of your book ties in so well with the same timeline of Gone with you know, the Wind. It does. I mean, Gone with the Wind is a story that, or the Civil War is a story that drives Gone with the Wind. And with Vinnie, it's more of a backdrop. Mm -hmm. But yet she experiences a lot of the same things that Scarlett did, only from the opposite side. been a great way to end my visit. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Melanie. It's been a pleasure and we hope everybody 
reads the autobiography of Mrs. Tom Thumb. What was the very line P.T. Barnum said that some of us still use today? Here's a hint. Think lollipop. Go to our website to enter our Beauty in the Book giveaway. Ten people with the correct answer will be chosen at random to get a free copy of the Autobiography of Mrs. Tom Thumb by Melanie Benjamin. <music>